Normally, I am not dressed like this, but it is cold. It is uh, January something today, 16th. And here in Georgia, it is cold, <laughs> to say the least. And also, normally I shoot um, in the middle of the day. But right now, uh, it is 9.38 at night. And I was sitting here watching a movie, Matchstick Men, which is uh, a movie with Nicolas Cage that I'd never seen before. And on my Zenfone 9, heard that right, at some point I did make a video talking about a Zenfone 10 that I have. But on my Zenfone 9, I get a software update notification. And excited to see it. And also knowing that the Zenfone 10 has already received Android 14, I was thinking, oh, how great. Yes, it's maybe two weeks later, but the Zenfone 9 is also receiving Android 14. However, that wasn't the case. <laughs> so today's video, audio recording, whatever you want to call it, is about fragmentation. And we know that it's been a problem in the Android ecosystem pretty much since the beginning of Android. It's just something that is hard to manage. Uh, at this point, I'm sure there's a way that Google truly could take better control of the situation. Um, I know that they do, I think Google, I know that Google is paying some of these vendors or these OEMs to provide all, to provide updates in a timely manner, a uh, profit sharing or, or something, you know, just to you try to mitigate what we're going to be discussing here. So we all know, Android aside, when it comes to Apple and its ecosystem, one of the benefits, even though I can piss on Apple all day, one of the benefits is that if your device is supported, whether it's the one that came out this year or the one that came out a few years ago, if the update is available, you all get it at the same time. So I think right now with iOS, it goes back to the iPhone 10, uh, what are we, iOS 17, I believe. Uh, so everything from the iPhone 10 up to the iPhone 15 series, when Apple releases an update, you, you all get it, we all get it, same time. Same thing with the Mac products, same thing with the HomePods, I don't know why I said HomePods in general. Uh, <laughs> uh, with the watch, the iPad, I think is what I meant to say instead of HomePod. But yeah, like it is nice that Apple is able to control that. Uh, that control allows them to do some other things that may not be as good, but in terms of software support, you can't really be too upset, specifically when it comes to the phone. Uh, I, I made another video talking about how curious I am to see how long Apple supports their M-series MacBooks. Um, to, I mean, just to summarize that video, it was, well, if on average Apple supports their phones for five years because they, they, they control the silicon and, and everything else, they have to support the Macs for longer. And the example I gave in that particular video was, well, if the iPhone 12 came out in 2020, and the M1 MacBooks slash Mac Mini came out in 2020. The, the 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 M1 Macs have to be supported for longer than five years. Like it just it wouldn't <laughs> it would it it would lead to mass hopefully outcry if your thousand dollar plus because that, that's just the base. Model. I mean I know the Mac Mini was was cheaper, but let's just look at the MacBooks thousand dollar plus laptop is supported for the same number of years as your, you know, $800 iPhone or, you know, whatever. So, uh, so yeah, software support for Apple, great. But when it comes to Android and right here, I have two devices that from the front look very similar from the back also look very similar minus the color difference. But over here we have the Zenfone 10 and over here we have the Zenfone 9. As I mentioned, the Zenfone 10 has been updated to Android 14. So great. Android 14 came out in October, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't remember. Uh, but I, let, let's just say Android 14 came out in October. Cool. 
Zenfone 10 got it either in the beginning of January or the end of December. I forget exactly when it was released, but a, a decent time frame for this to receive the update. Unfortunately, and as we we're talking about here, fragmentation, Asus is still supporting the Zenfone 9, but the Zenfone 9 didn't receive Android 14 at the same time as the Zenfone 10. And still weeks later, the Zenfone 9 still hasn't received Android 14. However, as I pointed out a few moments ago, or as I mentioned, yes, it was nice to see that there was some type of software update pending to download. So I download it, install it, reboot the, the phone, and to no shock, yes, it didn't, it, it was not Android 14. The, the file size was pretty small and, and it would have said what it was uh, in the, the little file notes. But what I thought was most interesting to, to further the fragmentation, so we're going beyond um, operating system differences. Now we're talking about security update differences. So the Zenfone 10, which is on Android 14, still has the, the security update from December of 2023. However, the Zenfone 9, which is on Android 13, has the security update from January of 2024. So we're behind in operating system, but we're ahead in security updates. But here we're ahead in operating system, but behind in security updates. And for me, that's a little frustrating. I mean, am I super concerned that something's bad, that something bad is going to happen to my device because it's a month out of date when for a while, I think this Zenfone 9 still had like the October security update. I think that was the one that it had prior to receiving this January one. So no, I'm, I'm not super concerned, but it is emblematic of the problem of, all right, two phones came out a year apart. Clearly we're seeing that, well, the newer one is going to receive more timely updates, but you're like, well, this phone is just a little over a year old. So <laughs> Asus can't just put it in the, you know, in the, in, in, in the garbage bin, but that's what happens when their primary motivating factor is selling you the next year's phone. So right now, it's cool that the Zenfone 10 is receiving the updates, but in a couple months, when the Zenfone 11 comes out, this is gonna be put on the back burner. And for these phones, yeah, that cost, um, well, I, the Zenfone 10 was like 400, 400 something dollars. I mean, I, I, the, the retail prices are way more than that. And I spent a little more on the Zenfone 9 uh, in 2022 when I got it. Um, but it's, 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 it's frustrating and it's nice to hear, and here I have it right here, the Pixel 8, Google is going to support it for seven years. And there was a time when all Pixels did receive updates at the same time. And for the most part they do, but every once in a while there's an issue with something and Google might have to delay the, the release for one of the devices and the other ones might get it. So right now, I still have this Pixel 8, uh, and I, I um, and if I didn't mention it, yeah, Google is, is is giving these phones now seven years of support, and the Galaxy S24 series might also receive seven years of support starting, what, I think later this week is when the Galaxy Unpacked event is. Um, so that so that's nice, and you know I made a whole other video talking about well, is seven years of support really that important? And for some people, it might be. For me, I, yeah, I don't plan on keeping a phone that long. And, and you know, I really enjoyed reading a, a lot of the comments uh, on some of the videos that I made about Google's supposed promise. And I really got to say, I understand that uh, prolonged support theoretically could allow a device to maintain its resale value. Um, but and I, I mean, I used, <laughs> used it as a perfect example. I bought a Galaxy S23 last year, so a couple of months after it was released, and I paid about 50% of what the retail price was, like just, just off top, you know, and that is not a, a longevity thing. I mean, I think at that point, Samsung had already promised, I want to say, four years of support, which is more than enough for a cell phone, in my opinion. And even with four years of support, I'm you're still easily able to find... Galaxy S23s around the time when, you know, a couple months after they came out for close to 50% off. And if you're able to buy them at 50% off or, you know, a few months after announcement and release, 
years later, <laughs> we're talking a couple hundred bucks, you know, it's not like Apple products, you know? So, I mean, I could be wrong. Things could change in the future, but I think it, it's, it's also just the, the mindset of the companies that, especially when it comes to Samsung, I mean, they're just cranking devices out. Yes, you have your flagship devices, your S20 whatevers, but then you have your A series. And I think there's a J series as well. And yeah, Samsung just wants to get as many things out in the market as possible. And with that flood of devices, yeah, you're going to have a lot of stuff on the market. So the supply is there. If you want a Galaxy, whatever, you can find one. <laughs> so, and, uh, and, I, and I guess one of the other things I'm not even thinking about is with, with Apple, because of the, the Find My stuff, you know, that whole Find My network, there are a lot of devices that are for sale, but are not usable because somebody's iCloud account is still attached to it. And that definitely, it doesn't create scarcity because there's still a lot of iOS devices floating around and you can easily pick one up on eBay or, or some other place. Um, but yeah, there's that, I guess, brand recognition, that that, that uh, bouginess, if you may, when it comes to iPhones. So yeah, with, with Galaxies, you're not going to get that. With Pixels, even with seven years of support, you're not going to get that. You know, uh, it, and I don't want to say it'll be nice because as a person who buys secondhand products, I don't want to have to spend more money on a phone a few years after it was released just because it'll still be supported seven years from now when I know I'm not going to have the phone. Yes, it would be nice, you know, for me to be able to resell it for more than I might normally be able to sell it for. But oh, I'm, I'm okay. You know, with Android devices losing the, the, the resale value, uh, losing their value the way that they do. So I think, yeah, that, that's all I want to talk about, though. Fragmentation, resale values kind of just started talking about it. But it's a little, it's frustrating. I mean, it's, it's good, yes, that both devices are receiving somewhat timely updates. I'm sure Android 14, the entire operating system is a bit more work <laughs> to make sure it functions properly on this hardware compared to just providing this month's security update. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I honestly don't even know if I care. You know, like I, I, I bought the Zenfone 10 just because I knew that I would get it at some point. So I got it, found it for what I view as a reasonable price. Probably will sell it and then, you know, maybe make some other videos about it uh, before I before I do. Um, but yeah, fragmentation, man. It, it, it is, it is frustrating, it, to, to say the least. It is really, really frustrating. But the last thing I want to show, and yeah, again, made a whole other video about this. In fact, I made two. How long it takes to install an operating system upgrade or a security update or whatever you want to call it on a Pixel. So right now, uh, it's still showing that it has the update for the, the December 5th uh, or from December 5th. So I turned off the little focus thing, so it might be hard to see, but it is right here at the top. If I tap it, it says it's up to date, but we know that it isn't. Okay. And can't check for update. Updates are temporarily unavailable. Try again later. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but if we tap it again, it might just work for some reason. Is my Oh, okay. I Stupid me. <laughs> Yeah, I always keep it in airplane mode, but I did not realize that it was not connected to Wi-Fi. So, and in fact, what it was is uh, we changed some stuff with the, the networking equipment here. So uh, I have, have not turned this phone on in a, a little while. All right, cool. All right, so now that we are connected, <laughs> stupid mistake. Uh, let's check again. All right, so it found it, 26 megabytes, and I promise you it's going to take about 20 or so minutes. And again, yeah, like the tech news is always constantly happening. And for some reason, it always does this. It always says installation paused and you need to tap on resume. Uh, but yeah, apparently uh, Google released something to make this process faster. I made a whole video about that. I haven't edited or uploaded it yet. Um, but yeah, to summarize that video, it really was, it's okay to not be able to use the phone. Like, I, I wish I could have done a side-by-side -side comparison of how quickly I updated uh, this device to the January security update compared to the Pixel. 
And yeah, the, the, the issue from my perspective is that Google wants the user to continue to be able to use the phone while it's updating and minimize the amount of downtime. But if you just allow the phone to just download the update and then reboot and install it in that pre-boot stage, the installation process happens so much faster. So uh, we're gonna let that sit there. It should come up to the January security update and um, that'll be that. So hopefully fragmentation gets better. It has over the years and I hope that it continues to improve.